Like a lot of modern groove boxes, PolyN's Tracker is designed to make use of looped beats and one-shot samples rather than key-mapped multi-sampled instruments. And while one-shots can be fast and easy to work with, they can't be pitched too far away from the root note without sacrificing quality. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a workaround that will allow you to use key-mapped multi-sampled instruments in the PolyN Tracker. For this example, I'll be sampling a Roland Alpha Juno 1. I'll need a lot of samples, 48 of them to be exact. So I'll be using the auto sampler built into Akai's MPC software. The hardware MPCs have it too, as does the free MPC Beats app. Here I'm setting my MIDI input and output in the MPC software to the ports into which my controller keyboard and the Alpha Juno are patched. Now to select the patch in the Alpha Juno I'd like to sample. Back in the MPC software, I'll open up the sampler. Its hardware input is set to the same one in which I plugged the Alpha Juno. The tracker only supports mono samples, so I'll set the sampler's output to mono. Now I'll call up the auto sampler. Double checking that record from is set to the input into which the Juno is patched. I'll now need to set the range and number of notes to be sampled. I'll need one note for each of the tracker's 48 pads. I'll start with the default selection of C2 as my minimum note, and then I'll select a max note of B5. I'll set the note stride to 1 since I want to sample every note. I'm only going to need a single velocity layer at full value, so I'll leave this bit alone. My samples will need to be short since the tracker has limited memory, so I'll set the note length to the minimum of 1.0 seconds. Next, I'll reduce the tail to 0. I'll choose an appropriate base name for the samples. Looping isn't necessary for my plucky sound, so I'll disable the automatic looping functions. I'll check Make Current Program, which will automatically map my samples into the MPC sampler for instant playback in the MPC software. Now I can click Do It and let the auto sampler do its thing. We don't need to sit through the recording of all 48 samples, so I'll just skip ahead to when that's completed. Back in the sampler, there is now a new program with 48 samples. I'll right click on the program name to save it and its associated samples to a folder on my desktop. And there they are. You'll notice they all have note names attached and they are all in order from the lowest to the highest note. This is very important. There are different ways to handle the next step of editing and arranging the samples. I'm going to use my DAW, which is Cubase, as shown here. However, in a bit, I'll show you another option. In Cubase, I'll create a mono audio track into which I will drag all of my samples. The order in which the samples are arranged is critical for proper pitched playback. The tracker assigns beat sliced samples in four rows of pads. Each row is assigned left to right, starting with the top row. For this reason, you'll need to drag the topmost octave in first, ranging from its lowest note, C5 in this case, to its highest note, or B5. This can be accomplished by shift selecting C5 and then B5. All of the notes in between will be included in order. These are then dragged onto the track in Cubase. Next, I'll drag over the second highest octave of notes ranging from C4 to B4 in that order and place them after the first group of 12 already in place. Next comes the third highest octave, ranging from C3 to B3. This goes after the 24 notes already on our track.
finally, the lowest octave ranging from C2 to B2 is dragged into the track. At this point, I'll be cranking up Cubase's tempo. I'll be relying on Cubase's snap-to-grid functions to make this work, and my samples are short, so cranking the tempo reduces the silence between notes, thus conserving the tracker's memory. You'll see what I mean before I'm through. Next, I need to zoom in close and trim the silence from the beginning of all 48 samples. Yeah, this is not fun, but it is necessary to make this method work. There are other approaches you might take, but this method works for me. Once I've got all the sample starts trimmed, I can zoom out and select all 48 samples. I'll then zoom back in a bit until I can see the waveforms, and then I'll simultaneously trim all the sample tails. I can then apply a slight fade out to help alleviate any potential pops or clicks. I'll zoom back out a bit. Making sure the grids snap function is activated, I'll set it to use quantize. I'll set my quantize value to quarter notes. I'll then begin moving the samples closer together snapping the starts of each sample to the grid. Each sample needs to be the exact same distance from the sample preceding it. In this case, there are two samples per bar in the grid with a little space of equal length at the end of each bar. My 48 notes will occupy 24 bars. Once done, I'll select all of the samples and that little extra space at the end so that I can bounce to a single file exactly 24 bars in length including that little empty bit after the last sample. For my part, I'm going to bounce this selection internally and normalize the results before exporting the whole thing out of Cubase. This isn't strictly necessary. It could just as easily be normalized in the tracker itself. Now I'll export the normalized file as a mono 16-bit sample. I want to pause here for a moment to discuss an alternative to what I've already done. Though I've used my DAW, I could just as easily have used an audio editor such as WaveLab or even Audacity to trim my individual samples and resaved each of those files. Having done so, they could then be chained together in the free OctaChainer application as shown here. In OctaChainer, you would select Evenly Spaced Grid. Next, you'd tell OctaChainer to export a 16-bit mono 44.1 file. The samples could then be added to OctaChainer in precisely the same order that I showed you in Cubase, starting with C5 through B5, and then C4 through B4, followed by C3 through B3, and finally 
C2 through B2. Octachainer will add them to the chain in exactly the order in which they were selected, so you've got to be careful about this bit. Octachainer will then export the lot as a single sample, precisely and evenly spaced based on the length of the longest sample in the chain. Once the file has been created, it can at long last be copied over to the tracker's SD card. Having done so, the tracker is powered up and ready for action. Going into the tracker's sample loader, the file can be located and loaded into an empty instrument slot. Now, in sample playback, I'll scroll down to Beat Slice. Yes, that's the playback option we want. Holding Shift, I'll tap the button under Slice to bring up the Equal Slice option. I'll set the number of slices to 48. I am given the option to confirm, after which the tracker neatly slices my sample into 48 precisely equal parts. Zooming in, I can see that all of that preparation has paid off. The slices are perfectly placed at the very beginning of each of the original samples. And now for the final test. No pitched artifacts, no loss of quality, it's a perfectly mapped hi-fi multi-sample. Now obviously this is a compromise. Not every sound will work, but for short sounds, you can get a lot of mileage out of this technique.